Hi guys and welcome to my studio. This is going to turn into my new Zumba studio with the very kind permission of my landlady. Um, as you can see, I already have people in the class here. Um, and uh, what I want to just take you through is a couple of bits. Um, I'm not quite ready to start teaching classes. I've got to practice because it's a bit like playing the piano. You've got to, you've got to practice, practice, practice. Um, and it doesn't do any of us any good if I stand in front of you and go, I forgot all the steps because I would forget them all right now. Um, anyway, so I've been practicing, I've been watching my Zumba Gold review DVDs to remind myself of the important things about teaching Zumba Gold. And I want to just go through like some basic safety stuff. So, God. so if you're doing my Zumba class or any other fitness class at home, even a DVD, please take a minute to make sure that you're gonna be safe, okay? Because the whole point about doing these online classes during this pandemic is to keep you health, health, healthy and fit. So what we don't want is we don't want you, you to then go and have an accident. And it doesn't matter if you're 15 or if you're 50, if you're 85, none of us want you to fall over and injure yourself, okay? So, one of the reasons that I am starting with my Zumba Gold class is we really spend a lot of time in Zumba Gold doing things slightly differently and focusing on the safety aspect. So it's safety first, okay? And it's really, really, really important that we don't have trips and falls and things like that. So really, really important. And um, what I would say is in five years of teaching Zumba Gold, I had two people trip and fall, okay? And one of those was a lady who was drinking out of a water bottle, dropped some water, carried on, and just slipped straight away. And it was a matter of seconds. There was no real way we could avoid that. One of the things my classes may or may not know about me is when I was teaching, I would go into any venue and I'd be walking around, checking the floor for anything, any slips, any bit of rubbish, any sticky bits. Because sometimes actually the sticky bits are the worst because you, you stick on them and then you really go. Um, I would always be going in early to check the temperature of the room, um, making sure that it wasn't too hot or too cold. Okay, so the reason for this video is, guess what, you guys got some homework, you guys got a lot of work to do before we even get started, all right? Because that's the kind of thing that very often is invisible to people who just come into a class, particularly if you come in a bit late, okay? Also, please don't turn up to my class late for two reasons. One is I'm not gonna be able to help you because I'm gonna be teaching, and that's that's true of all the time, really. And I did it myself today. Somebody invited me to a business Zoom thing, and I was running around doing things, and I went to go and get into it, and I went, I don't know the number. Oh, I don't know how to actually do this. Um, whereas yesterday, when I was doing Beto's live class, I was kind of logged in and found it, and was sitting there waiting for it about an hour before. And with Loretta's doing a live, class tonight go and google loretta bates on look her up on facebook or instagram she's got the details on there and she's doing that with iframe so it may be that i start teaching with iframe we're going to look at the different platforms um, uh, with that tonight that's open to everybody in the world please go do it because you are not going to get this opportunity you know this, maybe you will get this opportunity, like, I don't know. But for the moment, this is a really exceptional moment to be able to do a live class with Loretta Bates, who is one of the most incredible instructors in the world. Um, and she was my basic training instructor. So obviously I have a lot of affection for her. And she's just one of the kindest, nicest, um, most lovely human beings in the world as well. So please follow her on Instagram because she always writes really nice things. And she's so positive and so helpful and so kind. Um, and an incredible, incredible, and actually a lot of my tracks that I'm working on to deliver to you are ones that she originally did. So there's going to be a lot of Loretta's flavour in my class as well. It's going to be adapted for this environment. So, um, really safety. Now I'll tell you what, what I did this morning is like, right, I need to get a bit more light in here. This looks pretty good on here, uh, but on Zoom it was looking pretty dark, so I was trying to get more light in. So I cleaned the window and I, I climbed up on the sofa and of course I nearly fell off and killed myself falling off the sofa. So don't do that, don't do that. Try to be safe, be careful. And um, 
So we're going to look a little bit at what, what's going to be coming up here. So I'm, I'm just playing around with my spacing and, you know, working with the logistics of the video. So this will probably be the space you'll have. And probably what I'm going to do is probably move the TV. Um, um, and the funny thing is I've actually been doing Zumba in this space for months now because I've actually had health problems and injuries and I wasn't able to get out and go to class or to teach um, my own classes. <laughs> Funny how things work out, right? Funny how things work out. So this is a space I know quite well. For my, for, for my workout, I would tend to just move the table, move the coffee table over a little bit. Can you see that? So it's just out of the way. And I do put the rug up, you know, and I'm working on the flagstone. And I do a bit of this, and a bit of that, and a bit back, and a bit of, And I kind of know the space, and there's nothing too sharp or dangerous. Sometimes I put something on the corner of this. So, um, but what I'm going to do now to sort of ramp it up and make sure that I have a bit more space is I say, move the TV. Um, and I've taken all the, everything out of this... Uh, the table so the table will be moved as well so if you get a chance to look at your area and try and maybe sort of think well can I move this kind of can I give myself a little bit more space um, because we might be doing this for a little while okay so take time to make um, you know make as much space as you can and and sort of get comfortable with it make sure there's nothing also this you see I've broken my nails quite a lot on these beams okay if I reach up, even in my pit, even in my without any shoes on, I'm touching the line. Okay, so when we're working out, just do a little stretch up. Is it safe? I think I've just given myself a splinter. Yep, there you go. This is the kind of thing we don't want to happen in class, and we want to make sure that you're safe, that you're not going to trip, you're not going to fall, and that's again one of the reasons I'm doing Zumba Gold, because we're not going to do any jumping for the moment. Um, give you a chance now I probably will do Zumba classes but this will give you a chance to do a workout in a space and get used to the feel of it so it's actually going to be safer than when we take it up a notch okay is that all right so it's kind of like uh, it's not a warm-up class but it's going to get you used to certain things and also what you always find with Zumba Gold is I slow moves down and then what happens is you can see them a bit more clearly and you can really do a bit more hip action, get those feet. And salsa's brilliant in Zumba Gold because salsa's the one that's very hard to, vo very hard to follow on videos, okay? So I've been doing my uh, Zumba Instructor DVDs here that they download and I send them in. It's much harder to follow somebody virtually it's much harder to follow somebody on a video it's much harder for me to do a zumba instructor dvd than have somebody live in front of me because they're a lot bigger <laughs> i'm only going to be this big on the screen so you're going to have to concentrate so that's a really good reason to do things a little bit slower to start with you'll get used to the moves and also i'll be able to talk uh, and we can talk in zumba but in zumba goal we really talk and we say you know, left, you know, take it back, do it this, da, da, da. so it's going to possibly be a bit more of a challenge to start with, um, getting the sound right on the video and all that kind of stuff, but it's going to give you a little bit more support to do things. Um, I just so much to think about, really, you know, I've forgotten what it's like teaching as a class, but it's good because I've been doing my own class, so I know for myself most of this applies whether you're teaching, whether you're a participant. Other health and safety. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do that, okay? Any questions, please, please, please email me, put it on Facebook, um, and then I'll add some more as well if there's anything else. Number one rule of Zumba, any kind of Zumba, drink lots of water, unless you're on a fluid restriction from a doctor, yeah? And I have taught people on a fluid restriction, so I know if I, I know it's annoying if I say drink more water, but this is so important for two really, 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 really big reasons. Number one is that drinking lots of water is so useful to your um, general health, particularly as we get older, because your thirst reflex will go. So one of the things we learn in Zumba Gold is to constantly remind people to drink more water. I'm so, so pleased to say that most of my students at Zumba Gold would say that once they started going to classes and getting into the habit of drinking during class, they were drinking more all the time. 
and they were feeling better. And that's so, 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 so great. Number two, we do not know enough about this virus, this COVID virus. But one of the things that we are seeing is that it dries out your throat, that kind of thing. So there are a lot of people recommending, could be right, could be wrong, to make sure you're drinking lots of fluids. If you have a flu virus, you will always, always be told rest fluids paracetamol. And that's kind of the, the general advice that we're getting, okay? So I would say keeping your fluid intake high is really, really important, especially right now. That's gonna lead into the second thing I'm gonna say. Again, this virus is unusual, unpredictable. So some of us were gonna have minimal symptoms and some of us will be feeling quite ill if and when we get it. So it's really, 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 really important that you listen to your body, okay? And take it at your own pace, all right? And a lot of you are going, oh, I do all this kind of like Trust me, there are gonna be days, um, especially if you're starting to work from home even, where you're not getting your regular exercise, you're not going out, you're not going for walks and things like that. I mean, I think we're recommended in the UK to still go out for walks and get some exercise. So, uh, but what I'm saying is, these things can creep up on us. Now, I actually had a pretty bad bug in December. And so I moved in here, started doing Zumba, did about two or three classes to get my fitness back because I wasn't very fit. And then I came down with a horrible, horrible bug. Uh, and I was very much like, hey, I'm just gonna work out through it. I'm gonna work through it, it's gonna be great. And what I found was if I worked out in the morning, by the evening, I was feeling so appalling. Because in the morning, with the music and the adrenaline, and it all feels good, right? It all feels good. And then, later on in the day, it just made my symptoms so much worse, okay? So you've got to use your noodle here. You've got to use your noggin. If you're feeling all right, do the class. If you're feeling maybe not quite sure if I'm all right, you can do the class, that's okay. Take it at your own pace, take it gently, see how you feel. If you're unsure, fine, take it easy. See how you feel a few hours later. It's really easy to get carried away with the music, with the adrenaline, and, and then even in a regular class, I would have people come up to me and say, do you know what, that new track was so good, I felt terrible afterwards. <laughs> It's not good ever, it's not good ever, but I want you to feel great. And I'd rather you take it a little bit easier, a little bit more gently now, get safely through the workout, and if you decide at the end of the day, you wake up next morning, you go, I wish I'd kind of done a bit more in that class, great, next time, give a bit more, that's fine. What I don't want you to feel is feel that you've strained yourself. No strains, no sprains, we don't, you, we don't want you calling a doctor. We don't want you having to need any kind of medical attention because that's counterproductive and not what it's all about. So you've really got to be sensible, you know? Think about um, the optimum level of exercise for you, okay? If you need to stop or slow down, that's fine. Do not sit down unless we're doing chair. Okay, or unless you really have to. What you need to do, walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. Two tracks usually, to let your, your body come down, let your blood pressure, your heart rate, everything else, your circulation slow down, because otherwise you can end up with things like blood pooling, and you can actually make yourself feel worse and feel faint if you stop suddenly. It's like putting the brakes on, don't do it. Walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. Now, I've got to be really careful and say these things to you because I'm not going to be able to see you when I'm doing my virtual class. So normally, if I'm teaching a class, I'll be watching you. I've got my first aid certificate, and I can be there for you if you need me. Not going to happen in this environment. So you have to think about it. If you want to, always buddy up with somebody else. Buddy up with somebody from the class, buddy up with another friend, like, you know, that you're on the phone. And just, if you're worried about the class, give them a ring and say, right, can I have a chat with you after my class? Just so make sure that, you know, I'm feeling all right. Especially if you're an older person, 
or you've got a health problem, buddy up, get a buddy and so that they can check in with you and make sure that you're, you're feeling okay. And I mean, I know it sounds a bit like, that sounds a bit much really, maybe that's a bit too much, but think about it, it's an option. Um, but uh, also if you do need to sit down, say if you've got a, like me, I've got a dodgy ankle, and so sometimes it goes a bit and you're, ah. If you do need to sit, you can sit down and still walk it out in the chair. You know, so walk it out in the chair. You can actually keep going in the chair and joining in. And when I do my Zumba Gold chair class in the future, you'll see exactly how that works. And honestly, sometimes I, <laughs> my favorite thing is when I taught Zumba Gold chair, and I used to have Zumba instructors who were like, you know, really, really fit, come along to see what a Zumba Gold chair class was like. And, and they'd be doing it and they'd be like, oh, this is really tough. I'm like, yeah, because these guys are hardcore, like the people in my class, you know, they might find it difficult to walk because they've got various other health problems, uh, but they they would come in and they would just give it everything. So it'd be like, chow, 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 all that, all the arms out, all that kind of thing. And they'd be doing all the everything, all the, you know, keeping up and doing the jive in the chair and everything. And this sort of new Zoom restructure would be sitting there going, your class is scaring me, you're ter they're terrifying me, they're so fast. And they're like, they do, they go to me, <laughs> who's coming to me, they go, your class, they, they do everything. You know, they do all the moves. How do they do that? And you're like, because they're my guys. Because <laughs> we work. Because <laughs> we practice. And it's training, you know, we do it. And, um, you know, because they're good. That you're going to be good. You're going to be my guys. You're going to be really good. Okay. So is that all about the health and safety? Um, yeah, just, you know, take, you know, you remember you've got to be your own trainer in this, okay? So I want you to remember that you are an athlete. Um, and when I teach, I really have to think about things like, when do I eat beforehand? You know, some people might want to eat a little bit before, some people might want to eat a bit before. Try not to come to class completely trash. You know, you run around all day, do all the housework and all that. And then you come in and you're like, oh, I didn't eat anything. I might pass out. Oh, no. Don't do that. Um, just think, you know, a couple of hours before the class, Mm, do I want to have a cup of tea or some biscuits? Try to go to the toilet before you come to class because I hate that when people have to run out for a wee. You know, it just it just messes up your um, routine. It messes up, you know, your your flow. And uh, I came out wrong. Okay, so anyway, just try and think about things like that. Switch your phone to silent. Tell your friends I'm going to be doing a class. Exactly the same as if you're going to the gym. And I would tell you what I would say to people. Somebody's in my class and they'll answer the phone and start talking. Oh, yeah, it's all right. This class is okay. Yeah. We're doing something called She Wolf at the moment. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, you'd like it. Why don't you come down? And everyone else in the class is going, oh, who is that person that's annoying everybody? Now, luckily, we're not going to have to put up with this <laughs> because we're not going to be able to see and hear you in this. And actually, please make sure. Uh, if you have a microphone that you switch it off, um, otherwise you might end up popping up on the screen and be like, oh no, who's that? Everyone could, thousands of people can see that person and hear you. I'm pretty sure we can work out the technical side so that's not going to happen. But always, always act as if, act as if we can see you and we can hear you, okay? Um, because honestly, there's a wonderful connection and energy when you do a live class together. I did a live class with Berto last night, had like 10,000 people, and then it went up to like 15,000 people. I thought, wow, right now I'm dancing with like 10, 15,000 people around the world. You know, and I know some people are just sitting there eating pizza. I know, because I've done that to the DVDs where I've sat there and eat a pizza. <laughs> Um, but in my mind and in the thing, I'm sure there were a lot of those people were dancing and I think we get more out of it. You know, get, this is, this is a really great opportunity at this moment to be able to do this kind of stuff. So please, please, please respect the opportunity, make the most of it, enjoy it, have fun and, um, don't waste it. You know, we, we seen so much stuff about people like stockpiling, da, 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 da. don't waste stuff. Just don't waste it. We, we need to be making the most of what we're doing. Um, so yeah, just think about what you eat, what you drink. Um, please, please, please do not mess with the warm up and the cool down. You know, because this is the thing, people always think that, oh, it's the easy part. People coming in late to class. Um, I will tell you a story from um, teaching in gyms. 
is I once said to a lady who was teaching me a class in the gym, I went, why don't you do the warm-up? You know, she was teaching a Zumba class, she wasn't doing a warm-up. I said, why aren't you doing the warm-up? And she went, she goes, well, I do the warm-up, everybody complains. And I was like, so? You know, we do the warm-up so you don't have an injury. It is vital, it's, and especially now, it's so, so important. The warm-up and the cool-down are there to get you safely through the workout. Also, in the warm-up, I'm going to take some of the more tricky moves and do them slower. So you're going to get a little bit of a warm-up of your body, but you're also going to start to be able to do some of those tricky moves a little bit slower, and you'll get them. The things that people will say to me about why they don't do Zumba are, don't have any coordination, don't have any rhythm, don't have any balance, I'm not fit. These are why you come to Zumba, okay? You come to Zumba to get fit, to get balance, to get coordination, to get rhythm. But actually, I always say everyone's got their own rhythm anyway. And what you'll discover in class is that you'll, you'll find a rhythm that you suddenly will fall into and it'll be great, 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 great. So anyway, and the cool down, the stretching, it's so important, especially if you've got a previous injury. For example, my ankle, I know that if I don't stretch that out, my back, if I don't stretch that out, my neck, if I don't stretch it out, I'm gonna feel much, much worse later on. So please respect the warm up and the cool down because honestly, those are really the most important parts of the workout. If you do the warm up, that's, that's so amazing. You know, if you do the warm up and that's all you can do, you have permission, my permission, to walk it out and stretch yourself out. Okay, you have my permission to do that. If you just do the warm up, that's fantastic, yeah? Because it is the most difficult part of the workout because that's when you're getting your blood moving, you're getting the energy going, you're getting all your muscles, um, you know, all the blood's getting to the muscles. So while you're doing that, it's like starting a car. It's like getting the motor going, especially if you've already been self-isolating or in lockdown or if you're recovering from this illness, you might need a little bit more get the motor going. You've got to like, you know, de-ice the windscreen and anyone in a hot country is looking at me going, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Car just starts, doesn't it? No, sometimes we have to get the car. Or we talk about like, you know when you get on the motorway, yeah? So you start your car and you get it going and then you speed up, you speed up, you speed up and then suddenly you're on the motorway and it's really easy and it's great. So when you're doing a journey, um, it might look like, you know, that you do all the miles and everything on the motorway, but you spend time getting on there and then getting off there. And that's where most accidents happen. So we've got to be really careful in the warm up, get on the motorway and then we come off again. Really nice and easy. And I'm just gonna tell you one more thing before I talk onto the, the important thing, which is about the floor surface in a second, uh, which is what you get out of Zumba and Zumba Gold. So all those things I said about, one really important thing about Zumba Zumba Gold is spatial relationships. What do I mean by that? Uh, one of the things that happens, particularly, and we get taught this in Zumba Gold, as people get older, or if they're constantly working in environments where people are quite close together, people lose their sense of distance between each other. So what you find is that people will just come and stand right next to somebody else, right next to you. Or they'll even, in a class, I've had people come in and try and stand like where somebody else is already standing, you know. They kind of forget that that's not my spot. You know, you kind of like come and stand right on top of somebody. And uh, so it's really, really important that we're gonna learn about spatial relationships. This is why I'm talking about really checking out, you know, where the fridge is, uh, where the coffee table is and things like that, because it's, it's one of those things that we get so used to, and actually, you know, most of the accidents happen in the home. <laughs> you get so used to your house, your home, you stop seeing things, you stop seeing obstructions and stuff like that. And we, we really have to, and you know, at the moment, like we're really having to see things differently, think about things differently. Um, and in terms of spatial relationships, if we can start to get into a position where we realize, try and do this, that's like a meter, right? That's umbrella length. So if we're talking about somebody standing away, one meter away, two meters away, it's a long way. So if you can learn about spatial relationships and think about distance, and that's what we're gonna try and do in this class as well, is start to understand that 
it's okay if I go in a supermarket to stand this far away from somebody. Or in a coffee shop, sit that far away. In a queue, that far away. One meter, two meter that we're talking about in terms of social distancing. Because I'm doing it at the moment, I'm standing in a queue and I'm like that far behind someone and someone will come in and stand right next to me. I turn around to him and I say, excuse me, can you back up a bit please? I'm social distancing. Oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. And you do think, why do I have to keep saying, <laughs> you know, why, why some of the stuff, you know, and we all are adjusting and there's some things that I'm doing and I'm saying and, and I'm kind of, I am having to approach things differently. Um, and it's hard when we've got so much going on and we get a bit confused. So, but it's really important that we start to learn about safe spaces. You know, create a safe space for you to do your workout because I'm not going to be there to check out the surfaces and make sure you're not going to trip over cables, lots of cables and bins. Um, this is my little space where I've been working out like, you know, I've got speakers and cameras and like little extra little knobbly bits and things. So figuring out, um, and obviously a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit because I'm a healthy person. Uh, so here we are in my notebook with all my moves. So, you know, this is the kind of workout space really of figuring it out. And just please make sure you don't trip over some cables. Please make sure, go bust your cables, move things around, you know, don't knock over your little wheels on bits and pieces, make it safe. I know you think I'm being like too much, um, but here, tell me this. Five years I taught Zumba Gold, two trips and falls. One was a lady who spilled water, the other one was a lady that um, basically the move tripped her up. And that's, that's my responsibility, um, that it was a bit, you know, was kind of maybe a little bit far. You can't see what I'm doing with my feet, but it's tricky. Um, so also be aware of what we're doing in the class if it's too much for you just take it easy walk it out that kind of thing all right here we go last one surfaces the floor surface okay so what am i going to do my class in <laughs> obviously safety you know up here but i am i going to do it in my slippers am i going to do my class in my slippers no i'm not going to do my class in my slippers why? Because you're probably going to fall over if you do it in your slippers, okay? So no slippers. Uh, okay, so here, here's what I'm going to do. So what I've been doing is I've been doing it on this surface. This is a stone surface with flagstones, as you can see. It's not perfect because obviously this represents tripping hazard as well. So I have to be really, really careful. And it's tough on my ankle and my knees. But that's okay because I've got these which are awesome, awesome, awesome Zumba trainers. So they've got a real like cushion to them. And um, so those are what I've been wearing to work out in here because it gives me a push and also keeps me safe. But I still have to be very careful with some moves, okay? So what I would like you to do if you get a chance is to put on your training shoes and go and have a play on your surface before we do a class. So if it's a hard surface, Try and get something with a lot of grip. I mean, a hard, um, smooth surface. Something with a bit of grip um, and with a bit of cushion, yeah? So that you're not going to, to even, even with Zumba Gold, because I've not been jumping, but still I can feel it, you know, can really feel it in there. It's really good for things like, you know, stomping around and, um, you know, if I'm doing, if we're gonna do like a sort of like a swivel, Kind of thing it's really good for that because you don't because it slips saglis you know so there's no kind of real push um real catch okay so but the other thing is as i've got here is i've got a nice rug you have to make a decision about a rug whether you take it up or not obviously a lot of you will be on carpet that's fine um if now i would never normally teach a class or do or take part in a class if it had this kind of surface no it wouldn't happen I would walk in and I would say, mm, it's very nice, but it's not suitable. Um, so that is why I'm taking a lot of time about this, because most of the time, if you're going out to a professional class, you won't be working out on surfaces like these. This is quite new and it's different. So you really have to think about things. Make sure you've got support in your shoes and they're comfortable um, and they're safe. Okay, safety first, safety first, safety first. Always the same as them, but even before the virus, okay? Um, the next thing is, so for example, I've got this rug here. Now I may work out on this 
for the reason that you might be able to see my feet better on this than you can if I'm doing this. You know, we'll see. I'm going to do an experiment. Um, now these are so old. I mean, they got no grip left in them. So I would I would wear these if I'm going to work out on the rug, because otherwise every time I do every time I twist, I would catch. So these ones, yeah, <laughs> nightmare, nightmare. I won't be doing. I would never work out on those. These ones they slip pretty slippery. So I'd be, you know, these are better for for the carpet. Obviously, you might not have a pair of trainers. You might not have five pairs of trainers. Whatever you got. So with this carpet, um, you might want to do it in your bare feet or in your socks, okay? So what I would recommend, if you have a hard surface, don't do it in your socks. I really wouldn't do it in my socks because it's too slippery and you're, you're very likely to have a, a trip or a fall. So if you've got a hard surface, I would actually recommend bare feet, but please be careful that you haven't got any bits of broken glass or anything that you could cut yourself and remember, if you stub your toe, it's really going to hurt. Okay, so you're, you're, it's up to you. It's up to you. Um, on a carpet, you could do it in bare feet. Uh, but I have also given myself blisters on the bottom of my feet when I did an African workout on carpet. So again, have a play, have a think about it. Don't wait till class. Don't don't wait till we're doing like a 45 minute, one hour class. Go and have a play now. Go and have a little jump around and step it up and all that. Prep. Go and do your prep for this. Get ready. Um, play around with your bare feet on the carpet. If you've got a rug that's like a sheepskin rug on a carpet, you know, you can always roll it up um, because that really is going to be difficult to do without falling over. On this rug, you know, I probably could get away with these trainers. Um, might be able to do it in bare feet. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure for that my feet wouldn't get a bit like blistered on here. So go and have a play. Have a think about it. Make sure you know, you know, ha get your water bottle or your glass of water. Uh, make sure you're not going to spill it. Um, I mean, I know it sounds like nanny stuff, but th the thing is that. <laughs> What usually happens is I do a class, then somebody does something and I'm going, no, I didn't even say don't do that. Because I thought, well, I just thought nobody would ever do that. So um, I've spent a lot of time, don't eat during your class. You know, I mean, that, that to me would be obvious, you know, because you've got a choking hazard. Um, if you're going to drink water, make sure you swallow it and don't choke on it. Um, and just, you know, I, I think there's been a lot of rules about how you can work out during this virus. And I saw some of them yesterday and I was like, oh my goodness, so, so tough to try and like not sweat on anybody. And, um, you know, all, all the rules that have been about that. So the great thing about if you're doing this at home, you're doing it on your own, you can just relax, cut loose and enjoy this. And that's the thing, we want to do all the safety stuff now so that you can really relax during class and you don't have to think about any of this stuff because you know that you're not gonna trip over the coffee table and you know you're not gonna get blisters on the bottom of your feet. Um, Cause I don't want you to, I want you to finish this class and go and have a nice drink or a shower or your dinner and everything. And you might feel a little bit sore afterwards, you know, cause you worked out some muscles and things, you know, but I don't want you to hurt. You know, I don't, it's not about pain. Forget the whole no pain, no gain thing. We don't like that, no, no. Fun, 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 fun. We want everybody to be safe before, during, and after class. And if you if you end up feeling like, hey, well that was fun, but I think I could do a bit more. Great, you can give, ask me for tips on how to get more out of the class. You can wait until I do the Zumba, you know, high high impact one, or find somebody else's class that's like really really high energy. That's great. I want to leave you, you know, feeling wow. You know, tomorrow I'm going to take it up a little bit. That'd be great. Tomorrow I could take it up some more. I don't want you to feel wrecked. Don't, please don't be wrecked by this class. I want you to relax, enjoy, have a good time and, and remember what it's like to be joyful and have fun and enjoy yourself. And so that when, you know, this storm is passed and we, you know, we just hope it passes as well as it possibly can for everybody, that then you can get back to your regular life and, um, and, and not have to sit around and wait to kind of be able to walk down the road again or, you know, to, to feel, we don't want you to feel 
you know, out of shape and all that kind of thing afterwards. We want you to, to be supported as very as best you possibly can during this time and be able to hit regular life. You know, as soon as you can get back out and do wild things, we're going to go and do the wild thing together, if that makes sense. Okay. Take care and see you soon. Okay, bye.